Purgatory Explained, Part 2, Chapter 60 Means to Avoid Purgatory, Charity and Mercy We have just seen the first means of avoiding purgatory, a tender devotion towards Mary. The second is to seek charity and look for mercy of every kind. Many sins are forgiven her, said our Lord, speaking of Magdalene, because she hath loved much. Luke 7.47 Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5.7 Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. If you forgive men their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also your offenses. Matthew 6, 14. Give to everyone that asketh of thee. Give, and it shall be given to you. For with the same measure that you shall meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6, 30, 38. Make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that you, when you shall fail, when you leave this world, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Luke 16, 9. And the Holy Ghost says by the mouth of the royal prophet, Blessed is he that understandeth concerning the needy and the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the evil day. Psalms 40 All these words indicate clearly that for our charity, mercy, and benevolence, whether towards the poor or towards sinners, towards our enemies or those who injure us, or towards the departed who are in great need of our assistance, we shall find mercy at the tribunal of the sovereign judge. The rich of this world have much to fear. Woe to you that are rich, says the Son of God, for you have had your consolation. Woe to you that are filled, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Luke 6.24 Certainly these words of God should cause the wealthy votaries of this world to tremble, but if they wished, their wealth itself could become for them a great means of salvation. They might redeem their sins and pay their terrible debts by ad abundant alms. Let my counsel, O king, be acceptable to thee, said Daniel of the proud Nebuchadnezzar, and redeem thy sins with alms, and thy iniquities with works of mercy to the poor. Daniel 4.24 For alms deliver from all sin and from death, and will not suffer the soul to go into darkness. Alms shall be a great confidence before the Most High God, to all them that give it, said Tobias to his son. Tobias 4, 11 to 12. Our Savior confirms all this and goes even further when he says to the Pharisees, But yet that which remaineth give alms, and behold, all things are clean unto you. How great, then, is the folly of the rich who have it in hand so easy a means of ensuring their future spiritual warfare, and yet neglect to employ it. What folly not to make a good use of that fortune of which they shall have to render an account to God. What folly to go and burn in hell or purgatory, and leave a fortune to avarices and ungrateful heirs, who will not but bestow upon the departed so much as a prayer, a tear, or even a passing thought. 
But on the contrary, how happy are those Christians who understand that they are but the dispensers before God of the goods which they have received from him, who think only of disposing of them according to the designs of Jesus Christ, to whom they must render an account, and in fine, who make use of them only to procure friends, defenders, and protectors in eternity. <clears throat> St. Peter Damien, in one of his treatises, relates the following, Tracts 34. A Roman lord named John Patrizzi died. His life, although Christian, had been like that of a general, generality of the rich, far different from that of his divine master, poor suffering crowned with thorns. Unfortunately, however, he had been very fortunately, however, he had been very charitable towards the poor, even so far as to give away his garments to clothe them. A few days after his death, a holy priest, being in prayer, was wrapped in ecstasy and transported to the Basilica of St. Cecilia, one of the most celebrated in Rome. He there saw a number of heavenly virgins, St. Cecilia, St. Agnes, St. Agatha, and others, grouped around a magnificent throne upon which sat the Queen of Heaven, surrounded by angels and blessed spirits. At this moment appeared a poor woman dressed in a miserable garment, but having a cape of costly fur upon her shoulders. She knelt humbly at the feet of the heavenly queen, and joining her hands, her eyes filled with tears, she said with a smile, Mother of mercy, in the name of thy ineffable goodness, I beg thee to have pity on the un." fortunate John Patrizzi, who has just died and who suffers most cruelly in purgatory. Three times she repeated the same prayer, each time with more fervor, but without receiving any answer. Thou knowest well, O most merciful queen, that I am that beggar who, at the entrance of your great basilica, asked alms in the depth of winter, with nothing to cover me but my rags. Oh, how I trembled with cold! Then John, whom I petitioned in the name of Our Lady, took from his shoulders this costly fur and gave it to me, depriving himself of it in order to give it to me. Does so great an act of charity performed in thy name, O Mary, not merit some indulgence? <clears throat> At this touching appeal, the Queen of Heaven cast a glance of love upon the supplicant. The man for whom you pray, she replied, is condemned for a long time to the most terrible suffering on account of his numerous sins. But since he had two special virtues, mercy, mercy toward the poor and devotion for my altars, I will condescend to give him my assistance. At these words, the holy assembly testified its joy and gratitude toward the mother of mercy. Patrizzi was brought in. He was pale, disfigured, and loaded with chains, which had made deep wounds. The holy virgin looked upon him for a moment with tender compassion, then ordered that the chains should be taken off and garments of glory be put on him, in order that he might join the saints and blessed spirits who surrounded her throne. This order was immediately executed, and all disappeared. The holy priest, who had enjoyed this vision, ceased not from that moment to preach the clemency of Our Lady toward the poor suffering souls, especially towards those who had been devoted to her service, and who had had great charity, charity toward the poor.
Purgatory Explained, Part 2, Chapter 61 Means to Avoid Purgatory, Blessed Margaret Mary and the Suffering Souls Among the revelations of our Lord to Margaret Mary on the subject of purgatory, there is one which shows how particularly severe are the punishments inflicted for faults against charity. One day, relates Monsignor Languet, the Lord showed his servant a number of souls deprived of the assistance of the Blessed Virgin and the saints, and even of the visits of their angel guardians. This was, said her divine master, in punishment for their want of union with their superiors and certain misunderstandings. Many of those souls were destined to remain for a great length of time in horrible flames. The Blessed Sister recognized also many souls who had lived in religion and who, on account of their lack of union or and charity with their brethren, were deprived of their sufferings and received uh, of their suffrages and received no alleviation. If it is true that God punishes thus severely those who have failed in charity, he will be infinitely merciful toward those who have practiced this virtue so dear to his heart. But before all things, he says to us by the mouth of his apostle St. Peter, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves, for charity covereth a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4, 8. Let us hear Monsignor Languet again in the life of Margaret Mary. It is Mother Greffier, he says, who in the memoir she wrote after the death of the Blessed Sister, attests the following fact. I cannot omit the cause of certain particular circumstances which manifest the truth of a revelation made on this occasion to the servant of God. The father of one of the novices was the cause of it. This gentleman had died some time previous and had been recommended to the prayers of the community. The sister, the charity of Sister Margaret, then mistress of novices, urged her to pray more especially for him. Some days later, the novice went to recommend him to her prayers my daughter, said her holy mistress, be perfectly tranquil. Your father is rather in a condition to pray for us. Ask your mother what was the most generous action, action your father performed before his death. This action has obtained for him from God a favorable judgment. The action to which she alluded was unknown to the novice. No one in Paray knew the circumstances of a death and t which had happened so far away from that town. The novice did not see her mother until long afterward, on the day of her profession. She then asked what was that generous Christian action which her father had performed before dying. When the holy viaticum was brought to him, replied her mother, the butcher joined those who accompanied the blessed sacrament and placed himself in a corner of the room. The sick, on perceiving him, called him by his name, told him to approach, and pressing his hand with a humility uncommon in persons of his rank, asked pardon for some hard words which he had addressed to him from time to time and desired that all present should be witness of the reparation which he made. Sister Margaret had learned from God alone what had taken place, and the novice knew by that consoling, by that the consoling truth of what she had told her concerning her father's happy state in the other life. 
Let us add that God, by his revelation, has shown us once more how charity covereth the multitude of sins and will cause us to find mercy in the days of justice. Blessed Margaret Mary received from our Divine Lord another communication relative to charity. He showed her the soul of a deceased person who had to undergo but a light chastisement, and he told her that among all the good works which this person had performed in the world, he had taken into special consideration certain hum humiliations to which she had submitted in the world, because she had suffered them in the spirit of charity, not only without murmuring, but even without speaking of them. Our Lord added that in recompense, he had given her a mild and favorable judgment. 